So, <laughs> obviously, I'm not Sharon. You session was supposed to be now. I can't be Sharon. You can make it weird. You can make it weird, right? So, for those of you that were planning on attending Sharon's session, uh, obviously, like I said, she is not here. So, my name is Chris Hunter I'm a partner technical architect at Microsoft. So, I have the privilege of working with loads and loads of different partners all over the world to build out some pretty awesome stuff. The other thing that I get to do, which I'm super lucky about, is I get to work with the cloud network. So just a quick show of hands in the room. Uh, who here has touched the cloud platform in any way possible? Yep. Awesome. Okay, that's great. You're getting in the right room. You can close the door. Um, so, there's a couple of things I'm going to talk to you guys about today. So we're going to go on a bit of a cloud platform journey. The reason I called this session a fundamental of functional awesome is because we're going to build something live together. So if you've got your laptops, whip them out, you could potentially build this with me. And we're going to try and experiment a little bit. The second thing is that um, I run sessions like this before. We're streaming, so I have to be at myself. <laughs> That's going to get weird for everyone. Because right now, from well, at this point, I probably got to about four of them. Yeah, it's not going to be good. I'll behave myself. It's going to get strange. Anyway, uh, from a cloud platform perspective, I'm a tattooed CRM guy. There are some pretty weird things in my body. <laughs> so uh, I have power apps that I right? I genuinely do. And um, I will only show it to you if you can buy me copious amounts of beer. <laughs> so that's a threat. <laughs> Other thing I would encourage you guys to do is also just um, take a look at those hashtags over there. We've got some very special people in the community. Actually, we're very lucky to have them in the room right now. I would really encourage you to get involved. First things first, right? Just start sharing the love of the platform. It's the right over if you want to get more information, if you want to get out there, if you want to learn, I would really encourage you to start chatting to people like Keith and Heather. There's loads of people in the audience that you can talk to, but I would really encourage you to get involved in First things first. I'm going to take you through a couple of very interesting points as well, which I think is very key for you. But right now, if you want to build something while I'm building something, get your laptops out. Yeah? Go to POR. Or told the office.com, it's going to look weird. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get nervous when I type that into my browser, you know, in the middle of the room. Yeah, you guys think it's funny. It's great. Yeah, that's it. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So, what we're going to do, right, is um, treat this like a little mini hack. So, I've got six users, users one to six. If you guys go to portal.office.com, open it in private browser, okay? you must try and use the corporate environment, this won't work. Pop in those, those credentials over there, and you can build something with it, if you really want to. Now, one of the things that we're going to talk about today is UFO sightings. So we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Some of you have seen the session that I've done around this. It is 100% live. Okay? It's not like when you're watching the Bake Off show where they put a cake in the oven and two seconds later they're like, look, it's finished. No, we're going to do this from scratch. And the reason we're going to do it like that is so I can show you just how quickly you can achieve awesomeness with this platform. Make sense? Yeah, is everyone excited? Yeah! Yes. Awesome. Right, so a couple of things that I'm going to get out of the way from a marketing perspective. I just want to give a show of hands. Who's ever seen a Quentin Tarantino movie? Yeah, awesome. Who's ever seen a Michael Bay film with all the explosions? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. So, we can do this one of two ways. We can do the Michael Bay version, or I can just cut the shit and get straight to the point, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, many people once again. <laughs> so, the way I like to do this is I like to do this fancy stuff. I'm going to show you some pretty hard cutting stuff. Okay? Use the information. Hopefully, it will help you guys uh, from a corporate perspective. But just remember, this is how I roll. Second thing. From an addressable market perspective, this is some of the some of the marketing uh, collateral we've got from Microsoft. The say our addressable market for application platform as a service is 32.4 billion. That's bigger than that in my, in my opinion. This is the addressable market for stuff, the, ava the availability we have to build stuff, right? So essentially if you think about the fact that that market share needs our help from a platform perspective, we have to help them, right? So we have to be the people that can't fill that gap. Now, let me ask you another question. Do you remember some of my mask when Y2K sort of came around and people were lighting fires in the road and running around with knives and 
Oh, it's the end of the earth, and nothing happens. So they want to work at the current center. There are still solutions, legacy solutions, in the world right now. Well, post, sorry, pre white No, that. No. So the central governments, local governments, financial services, when you walk into these organizations, you are going to find legacy stuff that needs our help desperately. Okay. So that's why the address in the market is massive. It's massive. In fact, I think it's way bigger. The next thing I want, I want to point out on the slide is we talk about the application platform as a service. So everyone's audience is working with software as a service, right? Yeah? Like I said, everyone has somehow worked with platform as a service. We're kind of in this middle layer of application platform as a service. The way that I like to explain to people is using Lego. Who here plays Lego? Yeah, awesome. So I play Lego with Lego with my kids, I also play Lego on my own. <laughs> but I like to equate it to Lego. So when you look at SAS, it's kind of like buying that awesome pirate ship Lego set and something's built it for you already. You're like, oh, okay, so you're a pirate ship Lego set, this is great. I mean, platform is kind of like flipping the Lego box onto the floor, saying you need to build something yourself. Application platform is essentially the middle layer that you need to find the right. So, use what works and you need to use to create this amazing thing. Now, the thing that I love about this concept is the fact that I love what follow the instructions from a Lego perspective because they get to see our results. The thing I don't love is not being able to do it again. I also like to be able to snap different sets together. So if I look at my Hillary Princess party and I make the pirate ship, there should be nothing stopping me from wearing a very old and very interesting pirate ship party. Right? So I want to be able to do that. I want to have the space to do that. But the art platform, the application platform is a service to be able to give it the ability to do it. So we're not saying, here's the page, paint my numbers in here. We're saying, here's some pens, here's some paper, let's work with you to work on here. Does that make sense? Good side, right? So we've got a lot of room to go. We've got a lot of opportunity. Wouldn't be a Microsoft slide if I would quote from my good old section here. Okay, right. So, next one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when people put these slides up, it's pretty evident that nobody puts one of these slides up if they're not in the top right corner. <laughs> right. Hey, look, we're growing. No, we're awesome, right? So we top right. The reason I put this up there is to talk about some of our customer records and the fact we've got some of the audience and where I keep all people that have worked with the power platform at customer sites and actually grown the technology and got customer the technology from a Microsoft facility. So that's a pretty awesome reference here. The thing that I want to point out though is that a lot of people say they've got these amazing customer references, but we actually have some of them. Which is really important to understand. Right. Another slide with some numbers. Don't worry, I'm going to get to building stuff and you understand this. I'm going to talk about trajectory for a second. We've got this thing called two, great, more than 2.5 million monthly active developers. Now, most of you assume that a developer is this person that sits in the corner growing moss, drinking Pepsi while you go, right? No, that's not the point. No, developers are somebody that creates something, some people that build. So I'd like to congratulate you all who are all developers. Not creating you, you're developers. That's not you're creating. That's pretty creepy. So, Congratulations to all the developers. Now, the trajectory from this perspective is we are at 2.5 million monthly active developers. We want to hit 10 million. That's our goal. Yeah, we want to hit 10 million. That's bonkers. That means that 10 million people are building cool stuff every day. What? 10 million people. <laughs> awesome. All right, I want to talk about the numbers. A couple of other things that are really important. When we look at organizations, a lot of courts, and the capacity to go and buy off the shelf SaaS solutions. Which is epic, right? So I have a problem, I'm going to go buy a solution to fix my problem. Yeah? So I'm thinking about local regional governments as an example. All of you live in a house, you want to live in a boat? Okay, cool. You're all in a house, right? You can engage your council or the borough you live in or uh, whatever you want to call it in your country. You engage with it at some point. So one of my pet is Bim Cage. My gosh. I don't know what's wrong with our building, but they do stuff all over the road. So there are some continuous people using our accounts and going, guys, get it together. Yeah. So what they do is they buy loads of SaaS solutions to fix the problem. Very, very normal. What then happens is that they say, oh, these solutions only fulfill a certain need. So what they then do is they start writing code. Who are the developers in the world? Epic. On that. Okay, so I 
I used to work for it. If anyone knows who that is, I'm very impressed. I used to write applications to make people develop each time. Oh, yeah, right. So the fact that you're into those databases is a paradox paper. Um, the solution I built for a fee management organization and the fee that that solution five years ago. I wrote it in 2003. Oh, yeah. Wow, we're thinking. The amount of technical debt is quite solid. The amount of technical debt that I generated for that organization was, it was immense. It's huge. Good job, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> 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 Don't you replace it with a really good system. But here's the thing. The path back home, we want to fill the rest of those gaps. And we can fill the rest of those gaps. So I'm going to go back to my Lego analogy. When I flip that box over and chuck it on the floor, and people are screaming, oh my God, I'm going to get a Lego. I see an opportunity. I see the ability to create. And I hope you have seen the same. I'll show you how to do the most best thing. Now that all everyone knows this is, right? Lots of green little doubles. We spend a lot of little doubles. We spend a lot of time on our marketing, so it's now the power apps, not power apps, because we need the space. So we add the space. Yeah. So um, power automate, we've got this power automate in the room over here. So I'm going to Yeah, that's it. <laughs> we're going to, what was it going to be called power flow, but it's unlikely one of the track disease. <laughs> yeah. So flow is the glue that holds all this together. Is essentially the mechanisms to provide automation. When you look at power apps, right? Power apps are the ability to do things to people. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, apps are great. No, 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 no. What apps do is give you the mechanism to get data. The more data I have, the more opportunity I have. When I have data, I can do it live. I can do machine learning. Okay? I can do reporting data. I'm not selling a business at that point. I'm selling you the mechanism to understand your all for a good story. I worked for one of my first ever power platform projects. And please note, I don't call it power apps. Power apps are part of the platform. This is power platform. I want to get that brand into your mind. I remember that one of the first ever projects I ever did was with an OPM bus to a um, company in London. Really awesome business. I mean, tours and showed people the sites. It's really nice. One of the things that I did was they said, hey, Chris, we need to give us a solution to get the need and cost data organization is a really crap at managing the process. So I said, sweet. Where's your data at the moment? First thing I'll ask, you go, I'm going to install dynamics. No, I didn't do that. No, no. I said, where's your data? That's the first thing I want to know. And they said, well, you think most of this in Excel. Oh, you think most of this in Excel. I want to think how you manage your leads data. If you think it's in Excel. So we found a bunch of other data stores. Um, one of them being, I think, with Evernote. Yeah. So that was like a whole structured basis for it. Right? It was really fun. So what we did was we said, okay, first things first, we're going to figure out the right things to do today. We need to ask the common data service. SharePoint is not a relational database. Okay, you're not use this one. You do all the time. I'm not going to go on a data rant and hold you back big time now. <laughs> like big time. <laughs> yeah. So what we did was we put it in the common data service. They then said to me, ah, oh, Chris, you know what? We have these 130 fields that we need our, our people to fill in when they're on the train show the floor. Okay, I don't know if you guys have ever used an event like that, but you can get here now, right? We're not in the chance going to capture 130 pieces of information from anyone. I mean, other than, other than like, the attention span of a small school. And you ask me, you find 130 pieces of information, you can't the sauce it. So, yeah, we cut that down, and eventually we put that down to 70 fields on the floor. From 130. Huh. And they called it eBay, like I said, but I pushed back, and they pushed back. And the reason we were able to do that is number one, using the application framework on Power Apps, we were able to create both a model driven application and a canvas application. Model driven application, progressing, the actual steps of capturing the user prospect, canvas app, build a very simple task. Canvas apps are not one of the solutions. Okay? They fulfill the goals of the organization that are point to shoot. They are not meant to be that sort of application. So you've got the information using the canvas app and you progress with the user these steps in the model. Okay. Number two, the reason that we were only we only needed to use those seven fields was because of my friend over here, our ultimate. You know why? So let me give an example. Um, it is way easy, super easy to create a form with 100 fields that does 100 things. You know how difficult it is to create a form with 7 fields that does 100 things. Oh man, this is a lot. Mind you, we'll go from there. So here's the thing. Using Power Allstate, we were reaching out to other solutions to get data. We were augmenting pieces of information with other pieces of information. We were using things like AI data, right? To kind of build out the rest of the details that we needed. Let me give you an example. If I put in my area code, why is 
piece that I want to bring out to you is our connectors. In the Power Platform, one of our biggest things that we've had is connectors. And a lot of people actually don't know about this. But when I walk into an organization and I'm chatting to people that have Salesforce and SAP and Oracle and all that, most of you are square with that's opportunity. I'm going to go, I'm going to replace Salesforce. No, I think mean, that's a great system. Get the news it. I want to make it through application. Previously and historically, we used our dynamics. We used to have like pick away solutions, right? And build solutions on top of those. We're not doing that anymore, folks. We're not going to replace them with old means and build them. We love the fact that you've got data, so give us more. Give us more data. We want more. You know why? Again, more data, we build more flat. Does that make sense? Awesome. We'll show you the story. So, I love this slide because I keep on, I keep on kind of drilling back to people, but you can literally go over it. And again, you have to stop thinking in the terms of dynamics and Microsoft Office um, and Azure. There's more, there's way more. The foundation is huge. There's so much more out there. I remember chatting to somebody uh, the other day. We were talking about building applications to help us manage our kids' options. Bonkers, right? But why would I do that? That's okay. I mean, we build applications, we're going to show you, we'll do it both Silly little things, and the reason I'm using that multi-business world is not here. Because I want you to understand that this is stuff you can do right now in your actual life and get really, really great results from it. And just have fun. Look, they were, you know, they were still important, so they were still fun, right? A couple of other customer scenarios and examples, you can always bring customers into this because you are a community of Yes, we compete at some points, basically. We can think about different problems in Microsoft. Sure, but in the community, we have so much together that when we work together, the chilling stuff of the slide is actually okay. You know why? Because I'm comfortable with you guys when I'm working in the I want you to know that this community is much bigger than you. Right, so this was an example of a one of my favorite hackathons we've ever done on the car factory. We did a radar hack. You know that no one opened the laptop that day? How awesome is that, right? No one opened the laptop. We just sat there and built a piece of shit. It was really great. We spoke to each other. We treated it like it was money, money for. Right? We actually had a conversation. Right? We weren't like, uh, yeah, or yeah. No. We engaged. Right? Which is what we want. We want to engage. That's what our platform gives us. So I, again, and I'm pushing this really hard. I really, really, really want everyone to be involved. Okay? Do as much as you can. Just to get involved in the communities. So it's the best place in the world. Right? It's not all about getting followers. I promise you. It's all about engagement. Right? So, one of the other things I want to talk about, and I want to demystify something very quickly and break something, if that's okay. Anyone ever heard of the term the citizen developer? Okay, anyone in the room a citizen developer? You should all be putting up your hands, by the way. Who's the last citizen developer? You know you know. The citizen developer is somebody that is closest to the problem. So let me give you an example. Um, Keith, I'm going to use the example. So Keith, one of my good friends, is the best example of the citizen developer in the world. You just want to tell everyone what you do for a living. I don't know anything about 
to the song that was closest to the body. Now, a lot of people think that, oh my God, typically the benefits, um, they're going to run in bloody fire on my business and create all applications to cause havoc. Yeah, that would be able to do that. But then if you don't secure your data with the rest of your agent, sorry, I said it, but security. If I want my data to sex down, I manage my data properly. Okay. I don't care how many apps you have. For the millionaires, you can't go out to my data. Respect that, right? Think that I seem freaked out, right? Because they think that our access information gives people extra sort of security. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So, the next one, I don't like this term project. I don't think it's a, I think it's like a very inclusive, inclusive term. The reason I say that is because project is something that you want to do. Okay, project is something that you sit there and physically code somewhere else. Okay, are you able to build those Lego bricks without being in the line of the box? It's pretty awesome, right? The developers are so necessary in what we're doing now. The three types of developers, like I said, I'm a developer, I don't know how to code, but I used to be other people. I know that some new lots of projects that makes you very business as well. Project is a big part of what we do, but it's not so well like it's so much. Where I live on the scale, uh, I don't know, I'll probably like maybe about here. And you guys can figure it out. But let me tell you something. When I try and build a canvas set, it historically looked pretty bad. Not because I have no talent, it's because I have no taste currently. So I don't care if my icons are all flowers or anything. That's no difference to me. I could not give a damn as a pipe operator. So, I don't care about you are. I don't. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. He's able to build the most amazing user interfaces. I suck at that. There's no place for me here. If I'm not, I don't want to do it. What I want to do is I want to build up data and process. That's my thing. That's my job. I want to build up data and process. I do not care what color I want. And in fact, it's lost on me. Someone says, you should have been built to the web. Transmogrification? No. Anyone 
consult you where that sort of comes from. Oh, the worker? Huh? The other worker? Close. Tell them all. So it means to magically change something. Cause modification. It's not actually really good. It's not horizontal lines. So what we can do is I want to stand on and show you some stuff. Now here's the thing. Uh, I don't think I've done a planned demo since I'll use Microsoft. You know why? Because I prefer building stuff in front of people and getting the errors and trying to fix them. Is that okay? So we're going to do this live. Epic. So, well, that should not have built. The first thing we're going to talk about, the first thing we're going to talk about is number one, contact service. That's what you've got to put your, your data right now. So you give me the data, it's going into contact service. I'm using flow in the background to actually synchronize information. I'm going to have a campus app, which looks a bit like PowerPoint to itself and a love child. Right? I'm going to have my monitoring application, mm -hmm. making it go through my process, and actually there's also AI in there as well. So I'm going to show you some stuff. Right? And then we're going to build something like right. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right. So, hmm, that's on. So the first things first. If I go into my maker experience, I'm very good at naming my environments, as you can see. I've got one called Jeff. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> can I tell you guys something funny? There is currently a live database in South Africa in the Automobile Association called Steve, with three E's. <laughs> ALM is my thing. Right. So, <laughs> so if I go to my apps, right, you can see I've got LLG Complaints app. I'm going to go to this model driven application over here. Now, my Azure subscription is not necessarily paid for by Microsoft, so it might have run out, but we'll see how this goes, right? So, no, it's not. <laughs> so, if I go to create it on, I'm going to switch out and get a road back. Who ever put this down? Who, who is this? Oh, that's broken. Okay, who is the road badger? 20 points to Gryffindor. <laughs> you, my friend. Okay, so it looks like, looks like the AI is a bit broken around the sentiment piece, but it's going to manually do it. There we go. Much like all demos. So, what it's done is it's basically taking your information that you gave me for free on the form. Thank you very much, by the way. Okay. The confidence levels are using our um, AI builder. So it's basically saying, well, we're pretty sure that this is a good information case. Yeah, I'm not so much sure that that's a good information case, but it uses AI builder to figure that out, right? So it classifies the type of information I put in there. Once you pay notes, the business process flow at the top of it, five steps, four steps, right? Also, the sentiment analysis would work if I make my own things. But a road badger has been picking a box, and they had a baby in my car. Oh, bro, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> The weird thing is I know where his mind's at right now, so it's like a very, it's very weird for me. So, so the sentiment, it'll actually work out the sentiments. I've not written a single drop of code yet. It uses flows, actually check that out using text analytics. And I will go into the background, right? Now check this out. If my um, if my confidence level was over a certain point, so if it was greater than if it was greater than 50, the business process flow changes to four steps. If it's less than 50, it gets fine, right? Because I need to do a bit more work and understand exactly what's going on with that data. The next thing that's really key is uh, let's go back and take a look at a couple of other records that were captured there. Oops. Oh, these may have a bigger, this could go anyway. Oh, there we go, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that could have ended in tears. <laughs> right. So there's a load of them that have been captured, right? And um, let's put that one there. These may have a bigger burnout. It's a pity that the AI all the stuff isn't working. But essentially, you can see you've just given me data. So you've given me the opportunity to now do like flows, reports, and all sorts of other delightful things. If I take a look at what's actually going on, so you can see I've got the data over there. If I go to my dashboards, and uh, it's going to ask me to sign in, very like no, it's not. I've actually collated this information directly against a certain set of areas using Power BI. So I can go and take a look at some of the reports. This is the most important one, by the way. Yeah. So you can actually see that using Power BI, I can actually visualize that data. Right now, that's really key for me because I really care about the way data works. What I can also do is if I was one of the, um, if, I, if I worked in the LRG, they have a person called basically site managers or surveyors that walk around the councils. And this is a canvas app. And typically what will happen is that those people, <laughs> this is a real job, by the way. <laughs> those people will run around and put things like potholes and all that jazz. Now, what's important 
for me is that I need to make sure my app works really, really well to assume that that person that's doing the site today and stuff that actually capture information. One of the biggest issues we have when you can in local regional government and housing is anti-social behavior. Okay. If you come up with new one, I can experience that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you think I'm kidding, you know. <laughs> So here's the thing, right? What I can do is I can embed various pieces of information directly into my application. So as somebody that's running around the council, I can get more information to where certain cases are taking place. Obviously, you see a big spike there. It was definitely in my keep was not. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at some more AI. So if I go to capture a new antisocial behavior case, I'm going to go to detect. And I'm going to take a photo of John's house over here. There we go. It's John's, John's establishment. Here. And what this is going to do is this is going to give me the opportunity to actually understand what's going on in this specific area. Now, where I live in Reading, it's pretty bulgy. I'm also from South Africa. I'm sorry about the Reading. And... Um, if I go and do that, you can actually see, so if you think about a potential field service technician, what I can do is just run around taking photos of stuff, using artificial intelligence, and it automatically picks up various pieces of graffiti and broken windows. Now think about it like this. I've got two sets of window panes that are going to be taken broken, or automatically, or the magic of the You can alert people from organization basically alert to be collected using AI. So I've augmented my data. Other thing, and you can see that over here in the actual application itself, is I'm filling in very few pieces of information. Very few. I love that my area code is A infinite. It's amazing. The category I don't need to fill in because it will automatically do it using AI border. The dates I'm going to have to stick in there. And the ward, I'm going to put one satisfaction, the ward is ready. Cool. Done. Now, what's important here, I just want to tell you guys something. That app respects the database. It respects the data store. If I have a required field in that data store, I will not be able to not fill it in. Okay? I have to put that information in. So I'm not managing the, the, the actual application information on the business logic like side. That's not for me to do. But it's for the database that to do. Okay? If I have a validation on my field, it needs to be database in. You use certain elements of it in the app that you need to be careful because guess what you're doing if you're doing that? Creating technical data. So all I've done is I've captured that information, I fly back to my model driven application, beep, 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 press some buttons, go to create long, and eventually it will uh, upload it. Now I didn't put the description, but there's the details right there, right? So it's pretty much instant. Now, you guys are asking how on earth, how long did it take them to build that? Well, I'm consciously have 25 minutes left. You guys think I can build an entire solution in 25 minutes? Yep. I actually sit on this thing. I don't know if I can. Ten minutes. Yeah. I'm on it. Cool. Done deal. <laughs> I thought it was 25. What time are we actually finishing now? Put off? Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, first things first. Sorry, dude. First things first, if you guys want, you're more than welcome to build with me. Over here. Of an environment called Stuff01. Okay? First thing I did in my entities was I imported data using data flows. It took me five minutes to import the data. We're going to take a look at this, ent this entity over here. You'll see that I've got a bunch of data in here. Makes sense. Pretty straightforward, right? So all I've done is use data flows. So I can import data directly from various data sources using data flows pretty quickly. The next thing I'm going to do is well, what we're going to do is we're going to build out our model-driven application, new app. Now, first of all, I should be building within the solution, so I'm being a bad boy. Right? Model-driven application, we're going to call it view, if, or view of both sightings, done. Sitemap editor. View the code. Next one over here will be... Now, uh, this is typically when you go to uh, anywhere in the world and you feel like speaking to some crazy people. Have any of you ever seen a UFO before? You need to stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> or start. Right? Save. Save and close. Save. Right. Very straightforward. Model driven application. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a business process flow to work with our UFO sightings. We're going to call this new UFO. UFO sightings. And we're going to pick our entity UFO over there. Cool. Right, so this is going to give you the process to actually manage the sightings to completion. 
So we're only going to have two steps because of time, and uh, we know viewless items are very rare. So we're going to give this a step of data called status of that. We're going to make sure that this is stop your flow. <laughs> Resolve sighting, apply. I always overcook the apply button because I feel the pressure. If you're in the city, you're going to make sure that you're going to apply the button. So, and we're going to activate. Cool. Right, so, model driven application is basically done with the business process flow. Would you believe that? It's bonkers, right? Okay. You think I'm speaking nonsense, but I'm not. Or I might be. We'll see if it works. Okay, so eventually once this thing um, activates, I have found a little bug here, sometimes this thing kind of hangs, so what you've got to do is go into the flow designer and turn it on. Luckily for me, that's decided to work. Awesome, great, so what we also want to do is make sure that we have the, uh, the right information in our views, so we can see all of the UFO sightings. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and drag a couple of these little bits and pieces onto this. You know, comments over there, we want to make sure we've got the city as well. Just to get a bit more information and they posted. Awesome. Save. Publish. Eventually. And we are going to go and go back to my app design. Awesome. Awesome thing we need to do is make sure we've got the right form information. Okay. If you're using a custom entity, it's fine to edit the default forms. If you're using any of the dynamics entities or out the box kind of data service entities, do not edit the default forms. Copy them. Okay, please, I'm asking you as a friend. Because right? if you have, if your customers or your organization have other solutions and other people have edited the default forms, you're going to find yourself in a prickly situation. Right? Cool. So all I'm doing is I'm adding some of the information directly to the form. Fine, done. Thus, let's say, published. Great. So we've basically done our model driven application with the business process flow in less than four minutes. Yeah, pretty exciting, right? Cool. We're going to close it up and we're going to publish our app. Maze balls. There we go. Cool. Chevron. He's going to pick on there. We're going to make sure we've got a process assigned to it. And whack. Done and dusted. Model driven application with business process flow on top of data in less than four months, but I'm not finished. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to close that bad boy up because now we can manage the app through the actual site and through the process. But how about getting that information from people? Right. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Canvas app. Now the canvas app is essentially for my UFO spotter to wander around and actually get information from the crazy people that have seen UFOs. Once again, trying not to be rude, but if you've seen a UFO, you do need to stop taking hard drugs. Right, so, if I go to UFO signs up there, I click that dude there, and I go connect, hopefully I'm connecting to the right entity. This will automatically use artificial intelligence, interrogate the data of the common data service, and automatically create the app. There we go, power, production ready application. Done deal, right? What you can do is you can obviously make a very basic edit, so I'm not a theme fan of the blue themes, I'm just going to go red over there. Done and dusted. Great. That's pretty awesome, right? So it's created a production of the application that I can capture my details. So if I go to new and I go stick in some information over here, you can see we saw it on the 8th, it was in the shape of a diamond. And other country is in there. And the city was definitely in London, because that's all weird, 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 weird stuff happens. And I've got to save that bad boy over there. Epic, right? So if I go back to my model driven application, let's close this over here. If I go back to my model driven app, and I've got applications, your first item is model driven. Wow, that's a really, really great demonstration of what you could do. There we go. And I go and search by creative on. what happens when the screen freezes when I have three minutes left. Great. There we go. Right, so let's apply the process. So now here's the thing. Okay. That was done in seven minutes. I built two applications. I've used the data out of business process for seven freaking minutes, folks. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing is now, okay, if I can do that in seven minutes, Imagine what you can do with your organization if you've got the right data. Yeah? Very important to understand. 
This is me doing this in a non-controlled environment. Okay. You can create App Armageddon, but you must make sure your data is secure. Right? Things like the center of excellence is very important. So I don't know if any of you managed to connect to this environment. Did anyone connect? No? Did you connect? Did you build anything? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Well, now you have a free user. So, yeah. so here's the thing, folks. Just remember, there's a lot of opportunity out there for us to live with the power right? You do it case. Right? But the thing is, like I said, I've done this in a non controlled environment. When you do this in a controlled environment, then it's a lot more opportunity. All we're trying to do is enable everyone to do it, not just builders or the builders. So, I know that was a little soft to I hope that's made sense. I don't have any questions. Either I can drink the <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you everyone. I appreciate the time. Um, I would really like to hang out with you later. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks for coming along. Yeah, never get old. Uh, it's good fun. I love, I love that too. That was a lot of fun. You see, you do it faster and faster every time. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.